Williams, and I'm here to spend a little time with you today to tell you all about a fabulous paint kit um, that's available on Amazon.com, and this paint kit is all about Apple Barrel today. Apple Barrel paint is a phenomenal paint that is perfect for the Mommy and Me projects. It's perfect for kids' school projects, the general DIY crafter. It's an all-around good basic acrylic paint. The kit I'm going to uh, talk about today is actually called Promo ABI and in the studio with me today I have Stephen White who is going to be sharing some uh, links for you so that you can go direct to Amazon if you're interested in purchasing this. Stephen will also help monitor any comments and questions if, that you might have so be sure and go ahead and type them in in the chat and either Stephen will answer them or um, he'll pass them along to me handling our audiovisual needs today is Jake Bogle. So I love having the guys in the studio with me today to help me with this presentation. Again, I'm Chris Williams. We are in the Plaid Craft studio and we are going to share with you a little bit of time today all about Promo ABI, the Apple Barrel Paint Kit. Apple Barrel comes in a variety of different formulas. Um, a good basic acrylic paint that will dry to a matte finish. It's also available in a high gloss formula as well as a multi-surface formula. The kit that we're going to talk about today is the original formula which dries to a very matte finish. And I'm also going to do a little demonstration for you today using just, uh, let's see, I think there's six colors that I'm going to use out of this kit. The kit actually has 18 colors available. Really rich and bold, bright colors, um, including black, white, and gray. I should say in addition, there'll be black, white, and gray to the bright, bold colors. You're going to find in this kit everything from yellows and oranges and pinks and reds and blues and purples, a brown, the black, white, and gray as well. So it's a good basic all-around grouping of colors that can be used to create any kind of DIY project. And remember, with the holidays coming up, think about the kiddos that are going to be home or perhaps your grandchildren that might be around looking for something to do. Apple Barrel is a, a high quality, yet a little bit inexpensive paint that's perfect to play around with the kids and let them paint some ornaments, let them paint a few canvases. Today I'm going to share with you a wonderful project that's perfect for the kiddos as well as adults. We're going to paint this holiday tree beautifully set in snow against an ombre background, all using the Apple Barrel colors in this kit. And like I said, we're going to use six different colors. We're going to start with our white. We're going to use pewter gray. We're going to use new shamrock. We're going to use holly branch. And the last two colors is nutmeg brown and some black. With just this limited six colors here from our promo ABI kit, we're going to go ahead and let's just dive in to start painting this project. As you look at it, you're going to see, first of all, the background, and then we will add the tree on top of the background. Our background is done in an ombre effect with the darker color at the top leading down to a lighter color at the bottom. So let's go ahead. I'm going to set this aside. And Jake, we can go overhead now so everyone can watch. I'm going to go ahead and squeeze out a little bit of the Apple Barrel White onto my waxed paper palette here. And I'm also going to squeeze out some of the Pewter Gray. Apple Barrel is a beautiful paint to work with, like I've said a couple times now, with the kiddos because it's so easy for them to work with. It is a beautiful consistency to just kind of flow and brush out onto the surface. And it also is, because it's made here in the United States, here in Georgia, it's wonderful to support an American-made product. And it is an acrylic paint, which means it easily washes out of your brush and offer you any surfaces that you might get it on. That was actually a question that oh, Sarah asked, is great. it washable? So, Yes, it, Sarah, thank you so much. It is an acrylic paint, so that means once you're ready to clean the paint from your tools, such as your paint brushes or perhaps a palette knife, it just easily rinses right out in water while it's still wet. Um, don't let it dry in your brush because then the, uh, any acrylic paint is a little bit harder to get out of a paintbrush. Let's just go ahead and get started. And thank you for that question, Stephen. And thank you also, Sarah, for asking that. Anyone else that might have a question, do jump right in the chat because Stephen will be here to help you and pass along those questions directly to me. 
I am using a large flat brush. This is actually a three quarter inch flat brush today to help create this ombre effect on the canvas. By the way, the canvas I'm working with is a canvas panel. Again, perfect for uh, artists of all ages and um, perhaps even painting styles. This is a canvas panel, but of course you could use a stretched artist canvas as well. And this pattern um, or the shape of the tree can be changed depending upon the size of, that you're working with. I'm actually using a five by seven today. And I've loaded that brush good and full of the pewter gray, both on both sides of the brush you can see here. I've pull, stroked and pulled that paint out from the puddle rather than just like going in the middle and scooping up paint. And I'm going to work from left to right and right to left. I'm just gonna go ahead and brush that beginning at what I'm gonna think of as the top of my canvas. And I'm gonna go down, oh gosh, maybe about a little more than half, maybe about three fourths of the way down. And you can see as I'm brushing this color on, how beautifully it covers that texture of the canvas. And if I can, I'm gonna even show it up a little bit closer up to the camera here. You can see that that canvas has a texture or weave to it. And look how beautiful that paint kind of filled in the textured areas of our canvas. Again, I'm just working horizontally from left to right and right to left. And I'm just filling in most of that canvas with this beautiful medium gray value color. And again, this is Apple Barrel Paints. And this is one of the colors from the Apple Barrel kit that is called Promo ABI. It's available on Amazon. And you probably have already noticed that we have provided you a link if you're interested in purchasing this kit. Okay, so we've gone down about three quarters of the way on my five by seven canvas panel. I'm not going to clean my brush, but while I still have some gray in the brush, I'm gonna stroke up right next to that puddle of our Apple Barrel White. And with the gray side, you can see it's half and half on my brush here. With the gray side of the brush, brushing on top of the gray, I'm now going to start introducing a white as I work down, picking up a little bit more white as I go. And I'm gonna keep brushing left to right, right to left, and you can see how easily the color blends so well. Apple Barrel paints work beautifully with painting projects. They also work beautifully with stenciling and with stamping. Any basic DIY craft, really. This is, like I said, an acrylic paint. It washes out of your brushes and your painting tools so easily with soap and water while it is still wet. And look here as I have introduced that color of the white up into the pewter gray. Um, you can see I'm still kind of working it back and forth. It blends and softens so beautifully to give us a gradated background. Did we have a question, Stephen? Uh, no, we're good. Okay, I'm sorry, I thought no, I saw your hand up. If you do have a question, Stephen White is here in the studio with me and oh. he will gladly show. Oh. The good timing. We okay, we, he's gonna share one with me um, now. Is blending easier with acrylic versus chalk paint? Chalk paint, okay, so if you're thinking about chalk paint that's normally done uh, perhaps on furniture, although can be used as an artist paint, um, I think this paint, because it's a little bit thinner in consistency, the viscosity of the paint is thinner than our chalk paint is for home decor purposes, I think this does blend a little bit easier. The chalk paint will blend, but I think because the consistency of the paint is a little bit thinner, it does flow a little bit easier and smoother. And so therefore, as you are working back and forth, as I just demonstrated, it does dry fairly quickly and blend easily. Cool. And that was a good question. Thank you for asking that. So when you look at my finished sample here and you look at this, they're both about actually the same. So what I'm gonna do, even though this dries very, very quickly, I'm going to set this aside and with the, with the beauty and the magic of TV <laughs> or video work here, I have one that's already done. And what I'm gonna do, because this is all dry, I'm gonna tell you how I mapped out the triangle shape of my tree. I'm gonna hold this up so you can kind of see very, a little bit closer. I do have a pattern already kind of sketched on my canvas that I prepared ahead of time. And now I'm gonna explain to you how I did that. I grabbed a pencil and also a little chalk pencil that I have, a 
graphite pencil and a chalk pencil. And what I did was I first found, again, this is a five by seven canvas. So the middle of the five inches in the width here is gonna be two and a quarter inches. So I first kinda, I'm gonna point with my pencil here, I first kinda found the center of my canvas and putting a little mark here and a little mark down here, I used a straight edge ruler. I'm gonna set this aside so I don't get it in my puddle of paint. And then I used, because this is dark right now, because the pewter gray is darker than the white at the bottom, I used a chalk pencil to just pencil that white line that you see directly down the middle of my canvas. I then also figured how far down I wanted to have the top of my tree or how far up I wanted to have the bottom of my uh, tree trunk. And so I just roughly guesstimated about an inch down here and made a little mark. And I made about three quarters of an inch up here to be the bottom of my trunk. So now I know how tall my tree is going to be and where the center of my tree is going to be. So then what I did was uh, against the light color at the bottom, I used my graphite pencil. And again, against the dark color up here, I used my chalk pencil. So I just went ahead and started measuring of the bottom or making a mark for the bottom of the tree trunk. And then I moved up to decide how tall a tree trunk I wanted. And this is about an inch here. I then went out from the center line. Remember, we created a center about a quarter of an inch on either side and then brought that up about an inch tall. So I found my center. I made a mark across the bottom that is about three quarters of an inch up from the bottom of the canvas. Then from that center, I measured out a quarter inch this way and a quarter inch that way. And from those two marks, I then measured up one inch. So that gave us our tree trunk. Then to make the base of our tree, I just decided that I wanted it um, equal on this canvas. So I measured in from the inside edge about a half an inch and then drew that straight line there. And then the last thing I did using the chalk pencil is once we had the base of the tree, we now need to create the sides of our tree. And I just went up to that, remember we marked down one inch from the top? So from this point down to uh, the width of our base of the tree, just drew a straight line. So now we have a triangle with a little rectangle at the bottom. And that's why I'm telling you this is something that children can do. It's so easy to kind of draw that big triangle and, and then add a little rectangle at the bottom. We're working with geometric shapes to create our tree today. Now, as I hold this up close, you can see that there's also a couple marks here on the side. I'm going to point. There's one there. There's one right here and one down here. And what we need to do now is determine when we're looking at our tree here, how many like levels, if you will, how many branches across do we want to have? Obviously, we have one down at the bottom and we come to our point at the top here. So I did mine. You can see here there's one, two, three levels. And then here's our fourth one down here. So we need to determine where these three levels are going to be for our branch levels. So you can do, uh, it, depending upon how tall your tree is, you could do mark the three marks that I did here, or you can create more levels of a tree. So what I did was I went from the top going down, there's one inch here, and I just made a little horizontal mark. Coming down again, another inch, made a horizontal mark. And the same thing for our last one. So I have one inch spaces that I marked with a piece of chalk from my chalk pencil on the side. So that's basic. I'm going to show you this one more time so you can see those little marks. That's basically all there is to creating the pattern for our tree. And now we're going to begin going ahead and painting that tree in. We're going to work with our darker green in this color palette that I chose today. And this is actually um, Holly Branch, which is our darker of the two greens. I'm going to use that large flat brush one more time, stroking into the puddle and pulling the paint out. And we're just going to kind of use the chisel edge of that brush and paint in very quickly the shape of our big triangle. Now this tree 
is kind of more of a whimsical tree. That, that's why I'm telling you it's so easy for people of all skill levels as well as ages to paint this little tree. But we're not going to leave it as a complete triangle. Once we get the triangle painted in, I'm going to show you something else that we're going to do to this. Because we want to emphasize the levels of the tree, the levels of all the branches that there are on this tree, we're going to go where those markings are on the side and increase the width of the tree. But first, let's just go ahead and get this base of the tree painted in. And you'll notice as I'm painting and demonstrating on mine here, I am picking up my surface and I'm moving it around so it make it easier for me both from an angle to see as well as the angle to paint from. And now we basically have our tree painted in. All right, now if you look at mine here, when you look at these different levels here, you can see it kind of goes out beyond that triangle. So I'm going to fill my brush still with that same base color. Again, that color is Holly Branch. And I'm going to use my brush on its chisel edge. So I'm going to hold it up so you can see a little bit closer. And I'm just going to, with my brush straight up, I'm going to go a little bit on the outside and add a couple little strokes there. And I'm going to do the same thing at the next intersection or the next section where there might be a different level of branches. And now I'm going to add it a little bit more there. So now you can see our tree has a little bit more dimension. And I'm going to repeat and do the same thing on this side. So you can see it when I did one side, I pulled up. Well, in both cases, I'm pulling upwards. But I can either pull towards me or away from me. However, it makes it easier for you. So now our tree has just a little bit more shape and dimension. We're going to let this, oops, I went into the white. We're going to let this dry now. And so I'm going to go ahead and clean out my brush. For those of you that were asking about the paints and how easily they are to clean, this is a brush basin full of clean water. And I just swished my brush back and forth in that water. And the brush came out very, very clean. There's no paint left in that brush. It's very, very simple to work with, easy to clean from your painting tools while your paint is still wet. Um, Chris, I have a question for yes. Sandra. Thank you. She asked, where can we get the canvas card instead of the wrapped kind? I would say you could probably get like a pack of them on Amazon. We're talking about the little canvas panel here. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think Amazon has them. Yeah, and you can also check your local craft stores too. Mm -hmm. But yes, definitely Amazon Yeah, somebody sells. else said the Dollar Tree too might have them. Oh, so. they might. I think sometimes they do. But yeah, Amazon has everything. Yeah, I would always check Amazon. <laughs> check Amazon. You can get a bundle of them, I'm sure. Right, right. And the canvas panels are perfect. Like I've said several times, Apple Barrel is a great paint for when you're working with children. It's a great uh, surface, too, little canvas panels, because the kids could draw their own picture and paint away, and they'd have a little masterpiece when they're all done. The last color I just added to my palette here, you can see there's some brown out here. That brown is actually nutmeg brown. And with a smaller flat brush, this we were using a three-quarter inch. Now I'm going to switch to a number. Uh, oh, you can probably switch down to maybe a 10 flat. I'm going to fill that brush with that brown color. Again, that's nutmeg brown. And this is what is going to be the color for our little bit of a tree trunk. So we're going to paint that in with the brown. And again... Just fill the brush good and full, and then use that chisel edge to help you kind of make those straight lines. And you can stroke either towards you or away from you. Just, And I want to point out how beautifully this apple barrel paint covers the surface that we've already painted. This dries to a gorgeous matte finish, too. And I think it's just such a fun, easy paint to work with. We've got our brown in there now. I'm going to set my brush down, and I'm going to go ahead and add some black to our palette. So let's get some black out. And what I'm going to do now, I have not cleaned the brown out of my paintbrush. I still have the brown in my brush. I'm going to now pick up a little bit of our black, stroking into the puddle and pulling that color out. And holding the brush so that it's straight up and down. I'm going to pull this up too so you can see a little bit better. Straight up and down. I'm using that chisel edge of the brush. And we're just going to paint some lines. Both going up as well as going down against that brown. 
And can you see a little bit of what I've done already? We're just kind of putting some little streaks of black in this tree trunk. And we're, that's going to kind of help us give us more of a look of painted bark. And very simple to do. Don't want to get too carried away because you do want to still see the brown showing through. We don't want a completely black um, tree trunk. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and clean my brush this time. And I want to load my brush good and full of our same color that we've been working with. And this is our darker green of the two greens. And I'm going to go ahead and pull out the lighter green too, just so you can see. The lighter green is the new shamrock, which is a gorgeous bright green color, perfect, like just like a shamrock. I'm going to go ahead and work with my brush that I had been working with. Again, this is a number 10 flat. I'm going to fill that brush good and full of that darker green. The darker of the two greens is holly branch. So I've got holly branch on both sides of my flat brush. And now what I'm going to do is come to where the area where the black is. And I'm going to stroke just a corner edge of that green filled brush up next to the black. And I'm going to kind of pat and keep stroking here on my palette. So I'm kind of blending that black into the green just on one side of my brush. And you're thinking, why am I doing black and green? Well, what I want to do here is I want to separate a little bit where our layers are. And can you all see that it is a little bit darker here underneath each of our sections? So this is what our next step is going to be. So I'm going to hold my piece sideways and I can see here where my marks are. You know, when we went out a little bit wider here, I'm going to hold the side of the brush that has the black in it right up next to the division line, the imaginary division line of where our levels of the tree are. And I'm going to just kind of pat that color on, allowing some of that black to just kind of dance along and not be a straight line as I'm patting. You can see I'm kind of swooping down in some areas and I'm also, let me do that look close so you can see now, we've kind of created a shadow now for that first bottom layer of paint. And I'm going to repeat that two more times for the other two la layers. If you all have any questions about the app barrel paint or the techniques that we're sharing with you today, be sure and ask them in the chat. Steven's here ready to answer all kinds of questions or pass them on to me. And I'm just reloading my brush as I feel the need. Again, I'm working with the black as my dark color and the green I'm working with is the darker of the two greens here in the kit that I'm working with and that is the holly branch color and so now you can see I've got black here to divide my sections and I will clean my brush this time we do not want the black paint in our brush as we move on to the next step and the next step is using the lighter of the two greens now we're going to move to the new shamrock which is the first time we're going to use this color I'm going to go ahead and fill both sides of my flat brush with the new shamrock because I want to make sure I've got a, that brush good and full of this lighter value green. Again, working on the chisel edge, we are going to, and you can start on the top layer or you can start on the bottom layer. Either one will work. We're going, to, I'll go ahead and start at the top layer to show you. We're going to start on that chisel edge and we're going to touch, press, and then pull up. Touch, press, pull up. So we're going to make that kind of a stroke along the whole area of that first layer of paint. And when I'm touching, I'm applying pressure and then I am pulling and lifting so that it gets less pressure as I get closer to the top of that layer. You don't want everything going straight up and down. You want it to follow the shape of each layer. So from the outside edges, I'm stroking, kind of think about stroking all the way up to the, using your tip hairs, your imaginary end point. I'm going to stroke here and go in this direction. When I'm in the middle, I'm stroking up towards that tip. When I'm on the sides, I'm stroking up towards that tip. So think about the direction and continue on with each layer. 
So I, as I feel I need to, I stop and reload, pick up a little bit more paint every single time. I add a few more little branch stems. And you can give him as many branch stems as you want. And you'll notice on the second layer, I did not go completely up into the black. I'm allowing that to kind of be a shadow or a, a differentiation point. I'm going to move now to the next layer. Again, I'm touching and pressing and lifting and kind of using the point of my tree, the tip of my tree, as my go-to for the direction of these strokes. And like I said, uh, even though this might be new techniques perhaps for some of you if, you, if we have any painters out there today, this is not anything that is difficult. It's all easily achieved. And folks of all ages and all skill levels can paint a tree just like this. Now when we get down to our bottom tree, we can go a little bit deeper or longer at the bottom so that we don't keep that straight edge of the base of the tree. And this moves along fairly quickly, you could see. Just remember to always pick up a little bit more paint when you feel it starts running a little dry on you. If you're just joining us, I'm Chris Williams. We're here in the Plaid Crafts studio and we are here to tell you all about a kit of paint that is available on Amazon.com and this is Promo ABI. This is all about Apple Barrel paints today, which are perfect mommy and me paints, perfect paints for children in their school projects. And like I said earlier, it's also perfect when you start thinking about the holidays and the kiddos needing some fun things to do. So this is a kit that has 18 rich, beautiful colors of paint. It is an acrylic paint cleans up very easily with soap and water, and you're just going to love working with the Apple Barrel paints. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lighten this level, uh, each of the levels here of our little fern, on, or no, that's not ferns, that's uh, tree branches. <laughs> and so I've got my brush still filled with the brighter green, which is new shamrock. I'm going to lighten that a little bit, but just brush mixing a little white into that. So I've got our lighter value green. We're making an even lighter value with some white. And I'm going to do the repeat the same step, just allowing some of our branches here to be a little bit lighter. Not a tremendous amount, just a little bit to kind of add a little highlight to our tree. And as I'm adding it, you can see it's giving you a little bit more interest. This very, very simple to paint, easy to paint holiday tree is so fun and this would even be great. Now I'm doing this on a five by seven canvas. If you like to do handmade cards for this holiday, what a beautiful Christmas card this would be. Or gift tags even. Think about all kinds of surfaces you could paint this design on using the Apple Barrel paints. I'm almost done adding this last layer of our greens on our branches here. Again, this is the new shamrock. I'm just brushing, mixing a little bit of the white, Apple Barrel White, and that gives us just another level of variety for our tree. And our tree is missing its snow now, so I'm going to clean that green paint out of my brush. This tree has been out in the snow a good length of time, and there's a lot of snow laden on, on the tips of all of these branches. So what I'm going to do with my brush cleaned and I want to make sure I have all the green paint out of it. I'm going to now pick up just the white by itself using that same flat brush. And I'm going to this time get it really good and full because I want to see a little dimension. I want this to be kind of very full. Like I said, this little tree has been out in the snow for a long period of time. So I'm going to now with that brush that's got an awful lot of paint on it. Can you see it's not thin and it's a lot of paint thickly applied to the bristles of the brush. I'm going to take the brush holding it so that it is diagonally straight up and down now and I'm going to use just a corner of that brush and I'm going to dance that corner kind of tapping on that paint filling the brush every so often 
and I'm just going to keep tapping that on. Let me hold this up so you can see it a little bit, a little bit closer. Tapping, tapping, tapping. I'm not trying to make a straight line. I am giving this a little texture all the way across every layer. So this is going to be repeated on the next layer. And of course, you can make your trees as snow laden as you like. I liked a lot of snow on mine, so I'm just going back and refilling my paintbrush quite often, you can see, just to make sure I've got lots of snow on the tips of those branches. If your green is still a little bit wet, some areas of mine is, you could actually wait and let it dry in between or take a hair dryer to it. The apple barrel paints do dry very, very quickly but I think I had an awful lot of paint on one, a couple of these areas. Now, you can hardly see on my sample here, but on, underneath the star, right at the tip, there is just a little bit of white snow. So I'm going to put some snow at the top of my tree too and let that kind of fall down on one side. Now, the next thing I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna go ahead and keep the brush with the white. The next thing I'm gonna do is think about the snow that's at the bottom here. We wanna make sure our tree is not floating and we need to ground him. I'm gonna clean that out because I think I picked up some green. And let me just go ahead and get some more clean white. And I'm going to add this white in my brush and just kind of, again, thickly applying this, giving our tree some ground. And you can see, again, I'm just kind of bouncing that color on. This is still just our white. And we're giving that tree a little bit of ground. This I did apply fairly thickly. I'm going to show you up close so you can see there's some texture to our snow on the bottom here. If you don't want that much texture, then you can apply the paint a little bit thinner in consistency. The next thing I want to do is I want my tree that is snow laden to be in a snowstorm. So we are going to fly spec it. And there's so many different ways to fly spec. You can use a toothbrush that you keep just for painting. If you do not have a toothbrush, I'm going to show you today how you can just use a flat brush by itself to do some fly specking. And what I'm doing is I'm taking the water from my brush basin adding it to this puddle of paint and pulling out some of that white. I'm thinning it down. It is much, much thinner in consistency here. And what I'm going to do is brush this tip right along my finger. And sometimes I even practice first on the side. So let me pull in this first base coat um, that we used in the very beginning of the class. And I'm just going to run that bristles of that brush along my finger and I'm going to hold this up so you can see. See how there's now little flecks of white paint? It looks like it's in a snowstorm. <clears throat> and so let me tell you the trick about fly specking. When you fly spec, the thinner the paint, the more water you add to your paint to thin it down, the larger the specks are going to be when you fly spec. The more paint, less water, the thinner, the smaller the speckles are going to be. So you can control how big or how small you want those flecks. I do always suggest that you test off on the side. And if you do have an old toothbrush, grab that and use it in the same way I'm showing you here and then keep it in your art supplies. If you don't have the toothbrush, here's just another little trick that you can use a regular paintbrush to create the snowstorm. And fill your brush as you feel you need to. And then, like I said, you be the, the control, you be the weatherman and control how much snow you want to add to your project. I always suggest, too, that when you fly spec, put a piece of paper towel underneath your project to protect your work area. You don't want to have little flecks of color all on your kitchen countertop or your kitchen table. I'm doing mine on the wax paper palette, so we're good. I think I've about made a snowstorm. Looks like a snowstorm to me. So here it is, I'm showing you up close. Just fun little flecks of white thinned apple barrel paint gives us a little bit of a snowstorm. And I felt like my tree needed a little bit of a 
glimmer and shimmer for the winter time here. I added a little bit of a gold star on the top of mine. And the gold star was just simply a little gold um, square piece that I found in as an embellishment in the paper section of my local craft store. I'm sure Amazon probably has a package of these little gold stars you can get. This is actually not wood. This is made from a pressed cardboard and on the back side there's even a little uh, dot that you can peel off the end and it can then stick to a, a this is beautiful too if you're doing painted note cards this already came with gold paint on it but I'm going to take it to the next level and you can see here how beautiful our let me get it in the right light how beautiful our gold star is because can you see that dazzle and that shimmer? This is all done with a product that's called Folk Art Glitterific that I added as just as a little extra extra to our design here. And I'm going to open up our Folk Art Glitterific. I want you to see how beautiful. Look at the dazzling sparkleness of this glitter paint. Folk Art Glitterific is actually a glitter paint that is filled with glitter particles of many, many different sizes and even flakes of glitter. And as I stroke this out onto my palette here, you can see there's so many different glitter flakes, different sizes and particles. Here's a really big one right here. I'm going to scoot it out to the side so you can see. So there's everything from a very fine sugar glitter to like large flakes of glitter all in this paint. This is a clear medium that helps suspend all of the glitter particles and it's available in a two ounce bottle. This is Folk Art Glitterific in the gold color. It comes in many, many different colors. Glitterific can be used just like you're seeing here. You can brush it out and create kind of like a scattered confetti look, if you will. Or you can do it very thick on a surface and get that wow, glitter in your face, dazzling, special, special look if you apply it a little bit thicker. And I, you can use a paintbrush. I'll show you a little bit here. You can pick up some of this glitterific. You see how beautiful, lush, and thick that is. Pick that up, um, kind of like scoop it up, if you will, on your paintbrush. And then come to your surface that you want to apply the glitterific on and just kind of pat it on just to give you that thick wow in your face effect using the Folk Art Glitterific. You can also use a silicone spreader, which looks just like a brush, but it is silicone so that the Glitterific does not stick to your brush. And I always get a question before Stephen asks me it, we always get a question, is Glitterific easy to wash out of your paint brushes or your painting tools if you're using even one of these silicone spreaders? The answer is yes. It is also that clear base, that clear medium, is a water-based medium. So it is very easy to clean out of your brushes and your tools. Here I have some in my paintbrush right now. I'll show you up close. And then I've, as I take it to my brush basin and rinse it in there, all the glitter flakes and particles are then removed from the brush. Very easy to clean up. So I would let this completely dry after you have glittered your star. This star was done ahead of time and glittered and you can again see how beautiful, love that shimmer and glimmer and shine of the Folk Art Glitterific. I'm going to peel off the backing here and the white tip of my tree is actually dry now so I can go ahead and mount my star, my glitter filled star right at the top of my tree and wham, there we are. We have a gorgeous winter tree all completed, very simply, easily designed, very simply, easily painted using Promo ABI, and that is the Apple Barrel Original Formula Paint. Again, there are 18 colors in this set. There are two ounce bottles, made in America, easy to clean up with soap and water, and 18 beautiful, beautiful colors. Everything from the basics of white and black, to gray and brown and yellows and pinks and oranges and purples and blues and some greens. So many colors to pick and choose from. And because it is Apple Barrel and it is very easy to use, it's a great paint for, like I said, mommy and me, for the kids when they're home over the holidays. Grab some canvases, grab some note cards, and let the kids have a wonderful time with Apple Barrel Promo ABI. Any questions, Stephen? 
Uh, nope, just some comments here that say they love this little tree. It looks like such a cute, simple Christmas design. Uh, yeah, I think people are just enjoying painting along and watching. Well, that's great. Uh, well, I thank you all for attending today. Um, if you, there aren't any other questions, I think it's just time for us to say thank you so much for participating. We enjoyed it, and I hope you find your way to Amazon using the links that we provided during our presentation today. 